Good evening. Tomorrow, the ballot papers go out to more than 600,000 people eligible to vote in the Labour leadership campaign. And get Corbyn was the message of the day from the other candidates. Now, it's dawned on them that he could very well be the next Labour leader. After Tony Blair's warning in the Guardian newspaper of annihilation for the party if Corbyn wins, the other three contenders have been finally ramping up their campaigns, taking their message out to meetings and halls and libraries all over the country. Jeremy Corbyn, at the moment substantially in the lead in the opinion polls, was on tour in Scotland, where he said that critics who've resorted to personal abuse and attacks on his character are nervous about the power of democracy. Katie Razzle's been to the West Midlands to investigate the Corbyn appeal. Past Prime Ministers are immortalised in the street names on this West Midlands estate. In Labour's heartland, the titans of the party are woven into the fabric of the community. But posterity is harsh. There's no Kinnock Drive, no Michael Foot Lane, nor are they expecting demand for a milliband close any time soon. But what about a future Corbyn Street? He's electrified the race, now there are signs of a fight back. Labour's most recent winning Prime Minister last night warned the party faces annihilation under Corbyn, and today Yvette Cooper joined the attack. The veteran left-wingers' policies are neither credible nor radical, she said. But lots of grassroots members aren't listening. So many young people in particular have been enthused. This local councillor has endorsed Corbyn for leader. He's seen party membership in his area double. So you don't agree with what Tony Blair said about if Corbyn's elected, it's possible annihilation? No, I don't believe that at all, actually. I know that during Tony Blair's premiership, we lost four million voters, so perhaps Tony's not the best person to comment on losing voters. And what of Blair's point that Corbyn can't win a general election? I don't even know if he wants to win the general election. I don't know Does if that worry you? Um, no, not necessarily. My view on Jeremy Corbyn is he's in this to influence the debate, the debate about politics within Labour and politics within the country. I think he's succeeded in doing that. So you had not heard of Jeremy Corbyn before this contest? No, never, never. But New MP Jess him. Phillips's constituency party in Birmingham Yardley also endorsed Jeremy Corbyn. She puts that down to new joiners, including those affiliated supporters from trade unions and other groups with links to Labour. The affiliates were the ones who tipped it over. It was very close between Yvette Cooper and Jeremy Corbyn, but the affiliates tipped it over. So if it had just been the membership, who would have won? I think him? Yvette would have definitely won. Are loads of people saying to you, we love Corbyn? No, not normal people. <laughs> people in the Labour Party are saying to me that they love Jeremy Corbyn, or people who are rejoining the Labour Party. People on Twitter and Facebook are the kind of people we, where we all talk to just ourselves and think that we're always right. Um, those people are, you know, there's a, l a whole lot of those Corbyn squibbins and people are really, really like behind him. And that, that's really great. But, you know, I knock at least 200 doors every week in the constituency. He's not got a mention yet. <laughs> I have to say. This is all about Jeremy, basically. Yes, it's all about the message. In this Birmingham cafe, he's all they're talking about. Young volunteers for the Corbyn campaign this morning planning the next round of phone bashing to get the voters voting. They're three of the party's hundreds of thousands of newcomers. But this isn't about union manoeuvring, they told me, or underhand entryism by the radical left. Just something and someone untainted. I voted Liberal Democrat at the last election. I joined the Labour Party just after I saw Jeremy Corbyn speak at one of the Labour hustings. Um, Corbyn mania got you? Corbyn mania got me completely. The biggest group at any election is the non-voters. They're the fastest rising as well. And I think with my mum and with a lot of my friends, I kind of felt like, well, we're being ignored, except by this one candidate. So you, how old are you? 25. So you weren't around in the 80s? No. Do you know what happened in the 80s to Labour? Yeah, we're well, a politics student, so I should know. So the last time Labour had this kind of a platform, you know, dumping Trident, coming out of NATO, that sort of thing, was under Michael Foot, and it didn't go well. It didn't go well, but it was a very different time then, wasn't it? People are getting involved, people are being infused by his integrity. And it doesn't necessarily mean anything beyond people getting excited by politics and involved. And if everybody is complaining and bemoaning the fact that our politics doesn't get people involved, surely, surely this is part of the solution. 
Not all young people are totally sold on the JC message, and Yvette Cooper supporting Jess Phillips certainly doesn't buy it. When I look at uh, Jeremy Corbyn, what he represents to me is the Labour Party I have known all my life and grown up with, and that is sort of middle-aged, middle-class white men with beards. And that's all power to him, but it doesn't look different. It doesn't seem progressive to me. I've got a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old, and talking about reopening the mines is not giving me hope for their future. For many now, Corbyn looks unstoppable. But victory will prompt more questions about the new voting system that made it possible. It was the Blairites that wanted this. It wasn't the left of the party that advocated it. But it's working in your favour now. That's as may be. Are you smiling? Are you, as, as someone <laughs> on the left of the party, are you finding all this rather wonderful? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There may be lessons to be learned from this estate where most of the roads are named after Conservative Prime Ministers. However much momentum Labour may feel they have internally, history shows the wider electorate often finds the party isn't quite up their street. Katie Razzle. Well, Yvette Cooper began her attack on Jeremy Corbyn in Manchester this morning, characterising his policy of a return to Clause 4 as his offering old solutions to old problems, saying he was not credible she accused him of bad economics. 24 hours after the Blair broadside appeared in The Guardian, the newspaper tonight gave Ms Cooper their endorsement for leader. I caught up with her in Bolton this afternoon and started by asking her whether she agreed with Tony Blair's analysis that the Labour Party could face annihilation if it elected Jeremy Corbyn. Well, I think there was a lot at stake. And I do think that if we are too divided so that we can't win an election, if, then we let people down. And we can't do that because I think we need a Labour government now more than ever. When Britain has become so divided, when power is in the hands of a narrow Tory elite, and when half the world's wealth is in the hands of the top 1% of the population. So we need a radical Labour government. But you've but said I do, in your I am speech really you worried. cannot keep the, no, and that's, Corbyn cannot keep the party together, so that will the party split if you win? I think there is a serious risk that the party will split, will polarise, and I don't want to see that happen. I can't bear to see that happen because I just think there is too much at stake. And when you've got, you know, families who depend on a Labour to stop their tax credits being cut, to say goodbye to, to parents the possibility of winning the next election, I just think is wrong. But why is Jeremy Corbyn the most popular mm. candidate, as you put it in your speech? I think that people are reaching out for, for something different, for something for new and, and for change. Well, I don't think actually in the end most people will want the kind of, actually what quite statist nationalising ideas about from the, the 20th century. You know, a national education service, it's quite a white, putting power in Whitehall. I just don't think that Jeremy provides the answer. You, though, are seen as a machine politician and Jeremy Corbyn is seen as authentic. Well, look, you know, I can just tell you the things that I believe in, the things that I care about, the fact that I think, you know, families get a rough deal and should be at the heart of the economy and society, that the things that I've always campaigned for have been about women's equality, about all of those sorts of things, about, about you know, the equal, the deep equality of respect that we should have for He would say that being. too. He would, but I don't think he'll deliver. In the end, I just don't think he will actually have the radical ideas of the future. I think it is more radical to talk about Sure Start empowering mums and families to transform their lives for generations than it is talking about transferring power over energy companies from one group of white men in an energy company to another group of white men in Whitehall. It's interesting because what people are looking for is boldness. Now, you are a consummate politician, but sometimes people just say you're just not bold enough. Well, do you know what? I want, I want the answer to this because people want to know, would you sit in a shadow cabinet led by Jeremy Corbyn or not? Well, look, I don't want to pull the party apart any further than I think it's going to be. And I would want us to try and do everything we can to hold the party together. But I have said that I wouldn't expect to stand in the shadow cabinet elections that Jeremy has said that he wants to bring back in. In terms of the things that Jeremy is calling for now, I don't think they're right. And I would not be able to argue for them. I wouldn't be able to argue for them in the shadow cabinet. I wouldn't be able to argue for them out of the shadow cabinet. I don't believe in them. But I don't believe they're right for the country. But I'm not going to sort of start saying I'm going to become an SDP or anything like that because I don't think that is the right but way you do to think split that the party. You, but you do I think, think the party might together. split. You think there's a split. Worried. You've said that. Yeah. I am worried that the party will split and that is why I'm saying to people I really want us to hold I think I can hold the party together because we're a broad church and we should be. Jeremy Corbyn um, suggested that a policy that you voted for could result in Tony Blair facing war crimes charges. Is he right? 
Look, I think well, let's wait for the Chilcot report, which has been going on, which has been far too long delayed. It ought to come out properly. I think there were things that we did wrong over Iraq. I think there were no weapons of mass destruction. I believe there were. And there weren't and any you were weapons wrong. of mass destruction. I was wrong. But it wasn't just about the weapons of mass destruction. I think you have to accept that it was the wider strategy, not just the absence of weapons of mass destruction, that was wrong. We have to learn from what happened there, not be paralysed by what happened, but also learn from the fact that actually the wrong decisions were Would you apologise for supporting the war in Iraq? Look, you know, I think it's, it, that can end up in kind of a whole series of what do you apologise for yeah. and what you don't. I think you have to take responsibility. And I do take responsibility. I made the wrong decision by voting for it, but it was because I believed at the time there were weapons of mass destruction. I was wrong. The figures right now in terms of the opinion polls don't really stack up for you. Uh, you're in third place. If you really want to stop Jeremy Corbyn, if the future of the Labour Party is what matters to you more than anything else, shouldn't you stand aside for Andy Burnham? Well, I think I am the best chance that we have of both winning this leadership election and also being able to win the general election. So should he well, stand aside for you? That's what I think it's about. I think, we look, in this leadership election, there are different choices that people have. They can put first, second preferences. But I strongly believe that I'm the best way for us to have the chance of being able to stand up for the Tories right now. Well, let's just dig into this because um, the MP John Mann called for a single candidate against Jeremy Corbyn. Is he wrong? Look, I think we have got an election in which we've got different views being put forward and that is right for the party. And I certainly there was some suggestion, you know, while I go that somehow, you know, the women should stand aside and uh, leave the pitch and leave it all to the boys. I certainly don't think that we should do that. I never heard that, but it doesn't it was answer some of the my, briefing that would It that doesn't happened. answer my question, which is if what you care about more than mm. anything else is the future of the Labour Party, and if it looks like Andy Burnham is in best position as second to Corbyn in these polls, Shouldn't you stand aside, make a deal with Andy Burnham for a good job? You know, you don't do this as a way, of, as part of deals. That you've got to also be honest enough not to. I'm not going to pretend that I agree with Jeremy about the answers to the country. We, there's a lot of things we do agree about, about you know, tackling homelessness, about human rights, mm. about uh, our values. But actually, I don't agree with him about the answers, and I'm not going to pretend I do. Explosion in membership. Mm. Three of the four candidates um, have complained about the lack of data on new members. Is there a danger that this election is actually invalid? Well, the, the rules have got to be followed. The party have told us that they are doing robust checks on people because it is important, you know, it's a good thing to have people joining the party, mm -hmm. good thing to have people as part of the thing, but it's also got to be that people who are long-standing members and who believe in the values of the party that are deciding the party's future. But if Jeremy Corbyn wins, would you declare the race invalid? Well, I don't think you can just rip up a result just because you don't like it. Regardless of you know, whether you like the election result or not, you have to have proper processes, proper checks in place and a proper democratic procedure. Why didn't you run for the leadership last time round? So I did think about it last time round. I did think about it and I actually decided my kids were between five and ten at the time and I thought actually do you know what I can't do both things well and it just wasn't the right thing for me to do at the time and I think sometimes you make a hard-headed choice when you're a working mum you make a hard-headed choice about what are the things you can do well what are the things that you want to do I think I can do that now and I think I can do that now the kids are older but I don't think it was right for me last time and I don't think it would have been right for the party as a result but last time your husband did run, mm -hmm. so he clearly thought he could do both yeah. jobs well. Yeah, and he's got a different way of working than me, and he's always had a different way of working, and actually sort of different uh, ways. So in some ways, actually, the, the kind of, I uh, find it harder to multitask than, actually, than Ed does in, in many ways. So we have, you make different choices. But if I'm interested as a feminist, mm. why you would think that actually you were better looking after the children at home than he was for a start. Well, do you know, but that's not actually about the choice. I don't think that's about, oh, well, should which of us should be at home looking after the kids? Because when you're working, I mean, I was a, um, a minister, I was a secretary of state, so I was doing a really high-pressure job. Having a, a, a woman as a leader not, is not necessarily of itself going to be a radical change. Like Margaret Thatcher. It but. certainly uh, means, as far as you're concerned, that there should be a feminist pro approach to econo yeah. e e economics in our society. I'm really not sure what a feminist approach to economics actually is and how you would differentiate it from all the other approaches. When you're thinking about the economy's infrastructure, the things that underpin a strong economy, we've always traditionally talked about roads, railways, transport infrastructure, maybe skills, maybe training, 
I think we shouldn't just talk about the trains and planes and the boys' toys. Actually, in a modern economy, but it's they could be girls' toys too. Should it's well, much better to say, let's get on. women engineers? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So let me come so, back to that. But I think childcare is something that should be underpinning a modern economy. Universal childcare, and I would scrap the married couples allowance, which I think is unfair and stigmatising. Put that money into universal childcare to underpin it. Now that is, you're right, is about supporting parents, not just women. But it's the right thing to do. If you don't win and Jeremy Corbyn wins, what will you do? I really hope that that won't happen because I really worry, not actually just for the future of the party, because in the end it's not about the party as much as I love the Labour Party, it's about the country and all of the people that we'll be letting down. And I can't walk away. I can't walk away from the Labour Party because I love it. I can't walk away from people who I think we should be standing up for, but I just desperately hope it doesn't happen. And that's why I do think this is a battle, not just for the soul of the party, but is a battle for, you know, for all of the people we should be standing up for. In your speech, you said it would be five-year-olds spending all their childs yeah. who is under a Tory government. Uh, um, do you mean then that Labour would be out of power for a generation? That is what I fear, yes. And that is what I just think we have to fight against because I can't bear the idea of a Tory government just wrecking people's lives for years to come. That is what we have to fight against because we can offer them a better future, a better future and a better, fairer country for our kids to grow up in. That's what we're fighting for. Yvette Cooper, thank you very much. Thank you. I've been